joining us. Welcome, everyone. We appreciate everyone joining us again tonight. If you um, are used to joining us and you're not a first time, uh, things look a little different. If this is your first time, um, then um, you're not already used to what we're doing. But tonight we're doing something special. Um, I'm joined by uh, Columbus's very own uh, Chef Scott of Catering by Scotty. Um, if you have not heard uh, of the amazing things that he's done, um, definitely just Google him. <laughs> um, so we're definitely um, honored to be able to have him join us tonight to help out. Um, hopefully, if you were able to get the meal, uh, come pick up the meal earlier tonight, then you already have a front row seat to what we're going to prepare tonight. So we hope you enjoy it. Of course, it's going to be top full of nutrients and, and things of that nature, but we want you to have something that you can enjoy. So all those people who've been wanting those samples and been missing out on the samples, today was your day to be able to uh, come full circle with what we're going to do tonight. Uh, we do have our di dietitian Lori uh, joining us also uh, on the Zoom. Thanks, so, Jeff uh, Jason. I forgot about Lori. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> so, so we definitely appreciate her and her expertise. And she's going to share with us um, this, this, uh, this meal tonight um, and some of the wonderful benefits that are going to come along with it starting with our uh, grass-fed beef skillet. You know, Lori, most people will be like, oh, wow, ground beef, how can that be good for you? But we're using a grass-fed tonight, so how, how is that more beneficial to us than just our regular uh, ground beef? Well, what we know from AICR guidelines is that the recommendation is 12 to 18 ounces of meat per week. And so I feel like this dish is very vegetable heavy and moving in with some grass fed ground beef is a nice way to add some iron and a complete protein to the meal. You know, we cook enough together here that if there was no beef in this, it would still be delicious. We know that we know that we can accomplish that. Um, but this is a nice way to, you know, go ahead and include something that might feel a little more traditional um, I think that a lot of times if you can keep the variety up and, um, almost use like those types of things that you really enjoy or are reminiscent from, you know, earlier in your life, a childhood memory, something, but just make them vegetable heavy. <laughs> so like, you know, trying to be plant forward and making sure that we have all of those wonderful phytonutrient combinations that keep us well and let our cells behave the way we want them to behave um, is the key, is the goal. And if that means having, you know, maybe three or four ounces of a nice, lean, organic, grass-fed beef in this meal, I think that's perfectly fine. Perfect. So Scott, we, you know, we're, we're doing this meal here and we're doing a, a skillet-like uh, type of meal. Um, like, in your in your mind, you know, what do you think as far as um, doing a one skillet meal? You know, especially times like this in the year where you, you you know it's cold, people just want something quick, warm, and fulfilling. This is the dish you're looking for. So this is quick and easy, all simple. First of all, I, I want to introduce myself. My name is Scott Bath, executive chef of catering by Scott. I am a cancer survivor, 26 years. I am what they call a living miracle because I had terminal cancer with no hope of survival. Here I am 26 years later. So I truly believe I'm very gifted with, with that in life. And I try to give back as much as I can. And uh, my relationship with Bev Stout has been wonderful over the years. And I've always reached out to her to help as much as I can anywhere I can. So with that said, what we did here tonight, we made a little display already. This is the beef dish. And then I added some rice. You could do a white rice, you could do a brown rice, a basmati, whatever type of rice you like. I think it would be a wonderful addition. The dessert is this beautiful little cake that we did with a blueberry compote with as well. It has a, a yogurt cream on top. So this has no flour. It's made with almond flour. It's made with uh, almond milk and it's made with uh, uh, a, uh, a goat, goat, goat free, goat cheese yogurt. 
So we modified it a little bit, so just to make it really great. So what we're gonna do first, we got the skillet already warming up, and we're gonna throw the beef in. Sorry, get that in your way. So we're just gonna throw the beef in, let it get going here. I have no grease, I have no butter or anything. There's gonna be enough fat coming off the beef. So I'm gonna do this, I just have a wooden little spatula here, and uh, just get it going. By the way, I'm not very tall like this one, <laughs> so this is a little higher for me than normal. So, but this is very easy. Now, so, you, you, you said that um, uh, one, there's no oil or no 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 fat in there. The only fat is the what has what's in the beef. And so, when cooking your you know ground beef or so or any ground product, it's it really is you're going to utilize what's already going to come out of that naturally. Second of all, um, I don't know if people have noticed this sometimes in recipes, especially when you're working with the ground meat. You're using a wooden spoon. Uh -huh. So why, why would I use a wooden spoon? I mean, I may not have a wooden spoon. What if, what if something else? What's the value well, the, in using a wooden the spoon? Only the, first of all, the wooden spoon is, is fine. Rubber spatula, whatever you want to use is great. When you're using, this is a Teflon skillet. So I would encourage somebody so you don't ruin your skillets like yeah. that. To use something that's not abrasive and cut through. So yeah. it's very easy. A um, couple of things. You just want to take the meat and you want to brown it. So we're still going to get it cooked up a little bit longer so we can brown up all the meat, okay? Now, grass-fed beef, first of all, if you ever look at the meat in the grocery store, you're going to see the fat content. It'll go by 80, 20, 70, whatever. So the higher, the 90, 90%, will only have 10% fat. So being this is grass-fed beef, you can see that this has a very low fat content. So I even have a cup here, so if we had too much excess grease, we want to get that grease off. But there really isn't much. So we're going to utilize it just in the whole method of cooking. Did you, was that an 85-15? Or did you? This actually was a 93-7. Yeah. Oh, wow. So super lean. Yes. Okay. Which means it's going to be a little bit more expensive. The difference would be if you got one that's less, that has more fat, you're just going to give up a bunch of it to grease. So when you're buying it by the pound, you may pay more by the pound because it's got a lower fat content, but you're going to get more meat for your money as opposed to fat. Right. I do talk about that with people when they talk about buying ground turkey or ground chicken. You want to make sure that the skin isn't there because you're just buying the fat that's underneath the skin. And the way to tell is the price. <laughs> ground turkey and chicken without the skin is more expensive. So, so while Scotty's doing that, I'm over here preparing um, the vegetables that are going to go in there. Remember, we said this is a one uh, one skillet meal, and so we're going to basically have a base of this ground meat, this really great um, lean ground meat. Um, but then, as Lori mentioned in the beginning, we have it's going to be full, chopped full of vegetables, and it's all done in the same pan. Now we're using zucchini some yellow squash, red peppers, and onions. And as we've mentioned many times, you know, you, can, you have the recipe that you have, but whatever you have on hand, as long as you're getting some really nice vegetables in there, you don't have to stick to these particular vegetables. Um, but during this time of year, seasonal vegetables, these are really good hearty vegetables that will uh, be filling and give you that type of um, uh, satisfying uh, effect. But then also, you know, if you wanted to add some kale in here, I think, uh, Scotty, you think some 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 kale, kale yeah, in here. Right. Uh, we're going here to really bump this up. Um, if you wanted to put some carrots or so, so you know it, it gives you the opportunity to kind of really make it your own. Um, how are you want and whatever vegetables that you are uh, that you enjoy. If you want some nice fresh peas? I think that would be really great. But it's really up to you and what vegetables you want to add in there. If you want to add some tomatoes, some diced or chopped tomatoes. They definitely would go great in here too. So play around with that and, and kind of make it make it your own uh, and build those just as long as you have plenty of great vegetables. Yeah. So when it, one of the things with the vegetables, when you the smaller you cook them, the more nutrition nutrients you cook out of them. So if you give them a little bit larger and you have a little bit of a crunch, you know you're still getting you're maximizing your nutrition from them. And yeah, that's the key. Don't you don't have to cook your vegetables down so much. 
we want that, um, and we talked about this before, Lori has, um, even in the way that you have to chew, that that helps in the digestion. So, you know, you don't have to, you know, you want a little bite to them. You don't want to cook them down to, unless you have some type of chewing issue, but you don't want to, you don't want to cook them down to the too soft or anything like that. You want a little bite to them. Um, so I have, I have these about medium dice per se, so that they have some, they're going to give this just some nice texture. You'll be able to see the vegetables um, and they'll, they'll be able to have some nice bite to them. So we're throwing all the vegetables in. I'm going to add a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and we're, I'm going to add a little pepper and I already added a little bit of fresh chopped garlic, just a little bit to add to it. And then we're going to also add in some beans also, which are really, really great for you. So, and if you're not a black bean person and you want to try another type of bean that you like, that's up to you. Everyone's got a personal preference. I love black beans. I love all kinds, of, you know. <laughs> So, like, I think a good, um, even even a garbanzo or chickpea would go great, great in this. It's going to continue to give you uh, uh, still a sense of uh, protein and so forth. So, most definitely. So, we're going to let the vegetables cook a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to keep this going. Then we're going to add a little bit of tomato paste, a little chili powder, and we're going to add the black beans into this to finish it off. Now, we put a lot of vegetables in this one. You'll see on here it was a lot of beef, and then we topped it with a lot of vegetables too. We're so, gonna throw a little salt, a little bit of pepper. If you like it real spicy, <laughs> you can use a hot chili pepper or mild chili, whichever you like. And that's the other thing, also with seasonings. You know, I tell people you, you have a recipe. That's that can be your your guidebook, um, but it's all about personalizing it. I mean, you know, me, anybody knows has been in one of these classes with me. You guys should know what one thing I probably would add to this as far as a nice uh, seasoning or, or, or so. Some good smoked paprika. Really bring out and round that up. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of things. If you want to put some, some fresh thyme in there, some nice herbs, you can definitely add those in there. That's what we look like so far. Um, and, and give it a really nice round out uh, flavor profile. So we get those nice and going, and then we have some black beans here. Like I said, we can switch those out for uh, whatever other bean that you would like. Um, and this is gonna, it's gonna be easy, and it's gonna be quick. It doesn't take long at all. If you have kids or grandkids, hey, you can have this dish on the table in no time. And like I said, you don't have to serve it over a rice or with a rice. You could serve it with another vegetable. You could serve it with uh, roasted potatoes, things like that. Anything sweet potatoes would be a really great, great change for you if you like. I'm going to add in the tomato paste. I'm going to add a little bit of water so the tomato paste isn't one big chunk. So I'm going to add a little of that and get it going right here. So I'm going to put that on top, and then I'm going to take the little bit of the water. And here, put it on the tomato paste. So I get the tomato paste to go everywhere. Yeah. And break down. And most of the water is going to be evaporated too. So it won't matter. And see, that tomato paste is going to also add a, a layer of flavor in there um, also. And one thing about tomato paste, it's concentrated. So a little goes a long way. You don't have to, not like you're adding on a tomato sauce. Um, now, if, if that's all you have around, if you have a little bit of tomato sauce, you know, you can add a, just a, a little bit to that to um, give it a little bit of depth um, and, in a sense, a little sauciness. <laughs> um, but that tomato paste is concentrated tomato flavor. So a little bit to add in there. Once you add that water in there, it's going to allow that to really uh, uh, go through the whole dish. Lori, did, the, did you include recipes for people? Do they have access to the recipes? Um, yes, they do. Okay. Yes, uh, Chef, I, I'll actually be emailing everybody. I'm going to have to jump off here, so I am going to email everybody those recipes right now. Thank you, Darlene. I will say it smells great already. I think it's me that smells great. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I don't think it has anything to do with that. So. I got it mixed up that quick. I mean, <laughs> you, you guys know, you see we are wearing our masks, so we are practicing 
uh, safety protocol, but we're not socially distanced because we're big guys. Okay? <laughs> right, right. There's only so much distance that we can do, but uh, really yeah. quick, simple dish. And really just about done. If you could see, you know, one thing I like about it, I love those colors. Yep. You know, pe realizing that eating is really not just once you get the food to the mouth, it's really a five cents type of experience. And so you, you know, that old saying, you eat with your eyes, well, you, you really do. So having those really nice, bright, vibrant colors, especially in the wintertime, you know, most of the time you think of uh, foods in the wintertime as, you know, muted colors and things like that. And you only see bright colors in the summertime. Nope. This is how you can bring really bright colors and get your, your, the, the enzymes um, and the, your salivatory glands really going by seeing those bright colors also. So I want to let you show you, this is already done now, believe it or not. This is ready to eat, and uh, we might just have dinner together, <laughs> like a date, and uh, so we'll do it like that. I forgot the candles. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we have wine. So. Hey, all right. right. That's all we need then. <laughs> so does anybody, does anybody have any questions about this at all? Oh, that's a great idea. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay. Quick, but simple, it, and easy. Yeah. You don't have to use, if you want to do ground chicken, ground turkey, anything that you want will work that way. Some people don't eat meat but have fish. You can yeah. do this with fish as well. So whatever you'd like, this will work out really well. Very I just simple. want to point out that Lori's on the main screen, not the ships. Oh, Lori's boy. What? So in other words, we're not seeing the ships large. Let me try. You know, I don't know who are you. Um, I see them fine. I, I see them large. We see the chefs. Do I look skinny? I the chefs. <laughs> I'm having the same problem where Lori is having the whole screen, not the chefs. Sorry. You, uh, you, you actually, you might want to hit the uh, button on the side that says switch to gallery view. Yes. I did. And, and then switch it back. I and did. then you should get the chefs in there. Nope. <laughs> well, if I look skinny, then your cameras are working perfectly. Okay? It doesn't work. That's really all that matters. <laughs> That's what I I'm worried about. <laughs> I've been doing it for the whole program. <laughs> so Rochelle and Maxine. Okay, you... now it's good. Okay. <laughs> all right. So now. We're going to Got switch it. gears and go to dessert. Now, the only thing we didn't do is make you rice. Uh, like, but you could do this with a minute rice or any type of rice that you'd like. And it wouldn't take you long to do as well. You could actually do the rice ahead of time mm -hmm. and then warm it up right before you're serving. So that's a, a very easy thing to do. I'm going to get rid of this skillet. I really get rid of it. I'm just going to move it off. Oh, so, well, that's dinner tonight. So yeah. we got... <laughs> I'm going to move that off here. Then we're going to a little skillet, a little when, sauce saucepan. When you finally do get to have your dinner together, I want you to remember that the zucchini is bringing a ton of antioxidants, which tamp down inflammatory responses. I want you to remember that your bell pepper is one of the best vitamin C sources you can put your hands on. And the black beans are high in protein and fiber, which speed transit time in the bowel. So don't forget that when you're enjoying your dinner tonight. <laughs> Okay. Is anybody on that has the dinner already? Oh, did you raise your hand? Because I thought I saw something in the corner. <laughs> All right. I had my dinner. That's water first. So we're going to the um, dessert, which is very simple. You don't have to be a pastry chef or an avid baker to be able to do this. Very simple cake and what we call a blueberry compote. Uh, I've mentioned this several times where once you at least learn the technique of a recipe, you can then make it your own in any possible way. So we're making a blueberry compote, but you can definitely, if your blueberry is not your thing, you can definitely do a strawberry compote. Um, Wild berry, you can do well, an assortment of yeah, blueberries. Yeah, there, there's all kinds of compotes that you can do. It's the technique on what's, why it's called a compote. And so Chef Scotty here has, uh, he's put a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan, and then we're gonna add our nice rinsed blueberries. 
Um, if, if you don't have access to fresh blueberries, you can definitely use some frozen, make sure that they've been thawed out, drained, and then add them to your uh, pot. Yeah. They're going to have water in the frozen one, too. Is my sugar? Yes. I just want to make sure they pick up the salt. <laughs> and then I'm just going to add a little uh, sugar to that, just a regular uh, granulated sugar uh, to that. And this really, the simplest thing you could ever do, because what's going to happen is, is you let the blueberries do the work. The blueberries are going to cook burst. down. They're going to burst. A lot of their natural juices are going to come forth. That sugar in there is going to uh, reduce down, and it's going to allow it to become syrupy, to become this really great, flavorful sauce. If you can see a little bit so far, it doesn't take very long at all. This is a very simple part. Very simple sauce that, I mean, you could use this on this cake. You can uh, add it to some yogurt for breakfast. I mean, you can use it for whatever, make a parfait. So it's very simple in that room. So while he's doing that, I'm going to assemble the cake. So we're going to start with our flour. And as Scotty said, you, uh, you can use this uh, regular all-purpose flour, or you can use almond flour, or what we call a, a gluten-free type of flour. Um, those, those different measurements and those different, um, uh, if you use an alternative flour, just make sure that you're aware of if there are any type of variations in the um, amount. So we have our flour, and of course, we're gonna add some baking powder and baking soda and some salt. Now, if you're not familiar with baking, um, one of the ways to remember, and I might have mentioned this before, one of the ways to remember, and that even me being a chef, that I always remember the purposes of baking, what baking powder and what baking soda is. You have baking powder. Just remember that powder starts with a P, and that's responsible for the rise or the puff of any type of baked good. While baking soda, soda starting with an S, is responsible for the spread. And so we had, if you look at the recipe, when you get those recipes, you'll see that there's more baking powder that is added to this because we're making a cake and we want to give it a good rise um, in that. And then the salt, um, you know, you like salt in a baking dish? Just adds, makes the flavor pop. It, it brings out that flavor. So that's why we added a little sea salt uh, in here. And so we have all that mixed in here as our dry ingredients. And we have those nice in, in there. Then we have, we're using coconut milk. You can use almond milk, coconut milk, uh, uh, cashew milk, or anything of that sort um, that will be beneficial to you. So we have our dry ingredients. If you're going to use an almond milk, don't use a sweetened almond milk. Yes. <laughs> use just a, a plain, ordinary almond milk. I, we love cooking with almond milk. So, And that's because you get to control the, the, the sugar or the sweetness of it. Um, you know, sometimes when you get some of these things that are already sweetened, then you run the risk of, you know, not being able to control how much sugar. Because there's a certain amount of sugar that's in the recipe. And if you go get a sweetened, say, almond milk, then now it's going to change the, the overall flavor profile. We have some granulated sugar here. Then this wouldn't be a lemon cake <laughs> uh, without having lemon. some lemon. So I've zested up some nice lemon. So the zest of any type of citrus, that's really, really the natural oils of that. That's where you're really flavor punch is going to come at. We're going to add the juice of the lemon, but your flavor punch is going to come from that zest. That's what's really going to kind of give it that zing. And if you've already got one of these meals tonight, then you'll, you'll definitely know uh, that's where they came from. So our compote's just about done for slow. I just want to let add you know. A little bit of lemon. Yeah, we're going to add some lemon, and then we're going to add, you have cornstarch here? Is this? Yes, cornstarch. And we have a little cornstarch that we're going to add in too. That'll a little bit of thickener for it. All right. So we've got our coconut milk. I'm using coconut milk. Like we said, we, you can use almond milk or so. And we've got our lemon juice, lemon zest, our sugar. And I've just kind of mixed that up all in this separate bowl. 
our wet ingredients. Make sure I got all my lemon juice. Very simple baked dish. Perfect. Now, Scotty, when even when we the, we gave the sample of tonight, once again, like we said, even with the the uh, beef skillet dish, you can kind of add things to kind of make it your own and add them flavors. So, you know, if you want to add a little cinnamon, um, a little so the, ginger. The cake, first of all, we wanted to give it a little bit of a pop. So we add a little cardamom and a little bit of cinnamon to give it a little bit more flavor. Now, I love lime. I love uh, cilantro. This recipe, you could throw, make it add like a salsa to it and throw it in and give it a little bit more flavor for like that if you want to go that little Mexican route. And this yeah. cake, uh, we just wanted to give it a little bit, a little bit of a uh, kick. <laughs> and that's what that did. It was very mild, but it really changed the flavor too. Yeah. So it made it a lot more fun. So you and can you definitely can the, do that. See the compote all all done. It's pretty much done. We're just letting it simmer down. It'll thicken up because I added cornstarch to it. I'm just going to add this in here. Whisk that up. So, Scotty, you're saying we, and I know who you're talking about. But tell us who else you're talking about. Uh, meaning my daughters? Yeah. <laughs> now, I have, I'm very blessed with two incredible daughters, both chefs. Um, my one daughter works, both of them worked with me. One's now uh, lives out of the state. And, but my younger daughter is uh, an incredible pastry chef and she does a little of everything. She's amazing. So, if any of you follow the Columbus crew who just won the MLS Cup, the national championship, she is the team chef. So she's been cooking for them for seven years. Well, we've all been cooking, but she's their head main chef that takes care of everything for them. And under their dietary restrictions, she has to adhere to so many different restrictions. You know, with, there's no white sugar, no white flour, things like that. Everything she does for them is grass fed beef, free range chicken, wild caught seafood. So it's a way of life. So she's really, you know, changed the dynamics to uh, high nutrition for these athletes. So we got that all nice and mixed in. Um, like I said, it doesn't take much. You don't have to be a trained pastry chef or not. Um, and we're just going to add this into a cake pan. You know, it would be good. You, could, you can make these into muffins. If you have a muffin tin or so, you can definitely do that. You may have to adjust your cooking time, um, but you can make this as a nice muffin. So it could be a dessert, but it could also be a, a, a nice breakfast. Um, now, those of you that have got this dessert, uh, this is kind of what it looks like inside. We sliced up, we made little loaves. And just like you talking about, instead of doing one big cake, we made little loaves that worked out beautifully with a little powdered sugar on top to finish it off and then the compote and then we also made like a yogurt uh, sauce for it as well so it makes it really nice so so there's the stuff for the real quick nope, I don't i'm just going to add that in here i made sure i sprayed my pan or if you have some parchment put some parchment down if you're using the cake pan and just uh put that in the bottom of it this is what one of the finished little cakes looks like that he's doing right now just so you see. And anybody who got the dinner, each person got their own individual cake like this. And they received the, the blueberry compote, the yogurt topping, all on the side. So if you don't like either one, you just add whatever you want. I love these warmed up, the, the sauces. Yes. So you can throw them in the microwave for 10 seconds and warm them up and make it something really special. So we got that in here. Make sure it's all nice and even. And then we'll put this in our oven that we preheat to 350 and uh, should only take, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 20 minutes or so. And uh, of course you check it like any other cake, you check it for it to, uh, once it comes out. And if it's an electric oven, don't put it on a top shelf where the yes. heat's on the top. You wanna put it in the center rack to, so the heat cooks up evenly. And some ovens that don't cook evenly, you might want to just slowly spin it around so it gets a nice even cooking. Yeah, so. that's that's a great tip, Chef Scotty, because you know 
uh, a lot of times people don't realize it, a, a, a recipe is going to give you just a general, you know, but you have to know your oven. Right. Uh, and if whether it's a gas uh, stove or a electric stove, there's going to be very variance on sometimes that time. So that's why you have to you have to be aware. If it says 25 minutes, but you know your oven is is a hothead, <laughs> then, then, then you might want to check it at 20 minutes. So you, you you have to be able to know that and take those things into consideration. Uh, so easy trip that, also would be. We have a question. Yep. The cake that you made and distributed today, does it have wheat flour or just almond flour? Almond flour. Okay, good. Just almond flour. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was going to tell you another little easy trick if you didn't know this. When you think the cake is done according to the time, if you just take a toothpick, stick it in the middle, right in the dead center, pull it out. If it comes out wet, then you need to leave it in a couple more minutes. But it should come out a dry toothpick. That's a good, a good indication that your baking is done. All right, I want to know who's tasted this. Um, am I allowed to tell the truth? <laughs> yeah. I had it for lunch today. <laughs> I had it as a snack this afternoon, and I just had a little of the cake when I got here, and I had to cut it to make sure it cut nicely. So but that's about it. But yes, well, plenty of people have tried it today. So now this 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 topping, this yogurt topping, mm -hmm. simple. We got some what we call plant-based yogurt, so a coconut milk yogurt little bit of uh, vanilla extract and confectioner sugar or um, powdered sugar as most people know it as and that's just going to add a little sweetness to it and like literally you have a nice uh, consistency that way yeah and then also what we what it was the people that got it at home we used uh, a true vanilla bean paste instead of vanilla extract, because extract will thin it out just a little, mm -hmm. and the paste is so concentrated that it really goes a long way. So there would be your um, kind of uh, sauce to drizzle over that, as we show here. So you have that yogurt kind of sauce, and then the blueberry compote. You know, if you didn't know, blueberries and lemons just kind of go hand in hand. So. Um, a really great flavor pairing or so. So I'm going to go ahead and you mind if I cut into this? Uh, you finished product. Cut. Let's, let's. Are you going to eat that yourself or are you going to share? I, well, I don't know. Okay, well, I mean, you share. Uh, you uh, cut all you want. Uh, un unless we're going to save it for our, our, day, our dinner date. Well, you have some for dinner tonight as well. <laughs> <laughs> so as Jeff Scotty said, really came out really nice. If I was to take a little bit of sauce. You have to take your mask off. Uh-oh. Okay. That means i got to get six feet away. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see. Let's try some of this compote. And see, the compote's nice and warm. So, oh, yeah. Yummo. <laughs> let's see. Oh yeah, that's amazing. All right. If, you if anybody wants to come down and try it real quick, we haven't cleaned up yet. You're welcome <laughs> to do that. Oh, or if you have the dinner at home, you get to enjoy it yourselves. Really great, really great dessert. Really simple and quick. Anybody can do this at home. Um, and if you've had it tonight, you already know what the end result's gonna be. So it's definitely worth sharing with your friends and family to be able to do. A really great quick uh, weeknight dinner you know that's the the biggest thing is this is something you can definitely do on a weeknight doesn't have to be a special occasion you can put it together really simply uh, and really easy and all these ingredients are ingredients um, that are easily able to, able to be found and all ingredients that you either may already have at your uh, in your home um, and, and and are affordable and you can find all everything that's here is a giant eagle Mm -hmm. They've got everything that you could possibly need if you don't have it. The other thing I want to give you a little bit of advice, it's about time management with your dinner. The dessert will take longer to cook than the dinner, so you might want to prepare the dessert first, have it in the oven, and then start up your dinner dish and get it all done. And that way, by the time your dinner is done, you can pull it out and let it cool down. Most definitely. 
All right. Does anybody have any questions for us? We've got lots of comments saying totally delish. Everything was delicious. It's all delicious. Delicious, delicious, delicious. <laughs> well, thank you. Love this salad and dressing. Make a good um, dish flavor, like the texture. I've eaten the entire entree, loved it. Adding veggies made everything so pretty. <laughs> Lots of good comments coming in on the chat. Well, I'm going to do this again next month the same way. So if you didn't get a dinner, you need to look, look for us next month for this again so you can enjoy this at home as well. Most definitely. It's our pleasure to be able to bring this to you in a different way to, tonight. We're starting the year off um, with some exciting stuff. We want to continue this for the remainder of the year. Uh, so make sure that you, you don't miss out. I know you guys missed out for a whole year of not of being able to just uh, see and not taste. So this is a way that we can provide this opportunity for you to be able to, 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 to be right here in the kitchen with us per se and be able to enjoy while mm -hmm. also learning some, some new things. The next best way to being here. But listen, we want to wish everyone a happy and healthy new year. And let's start this year off right and do everything better than we ever did before. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you, you guys. For your time. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and Scott, we cannot thank you and Catering by Scott enough for allowing people to enjoy this meal with us tonight. It's that was our pleasure. So thank you. So if anybody wants to reach out, you are welcome to reach us. My email is scott at cateringbyscott.com with any questions. And Chef, do you have an email for them? Yes, and they, they all know my social media or how to get in contact with me or here. Um, if you try the dish at home and make it, please, as we say, make sure you share on uh, Cancer Supports uh, media or, or email them pictures or so. We'd love to be able to see you guys cook some of these meals at home um, and how they turn out for you at, at home. So uh, make, make sure you're able to share. All right, chefs, we have a comment come in that says, how long um, can the beef be heated in the microwave? It would only take about a minute, minute and a half in the microwave, but please make sure you take it out of the aluminum pans first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be responsible. For that yeah, we know that. <laughs> That's my kind of cooking. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cut. So thank you for the meal. It feels like Christmas opening the bag. <laughs> so wonderful. <laughs> Lots of gratitude. Wonderful. Still enjoying the salad. Eager to get to the rest. Thanks so much. Excellent. Went great with Merlot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Meal is fantastic. Fresh and flavorful. Really yummy. Thanks. So, and the, it goes on and on. So you guys can check out the chats too. But lots and Thank lots of wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening. Right. Everybody have a Thank great you. evening. Good night. Have a great evening. Thank Good you. Night. We'll see you in two weeks. Yes. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. Thank you, Angie. Yeah, you're welcome.